asking about you're asking about kind of the the lag in your golf swing, right? So um, one of the things I got to learn in my time in Birmingham was learning about kind of the history of golf instruction, right? So you had pre-1930, most everything was on the golf course, right? And this is where you saw a lot of like, a lot of knee movement. It's those old, old, old videos or, or images or drawings of the feet came way up. So you saw a lot of movement there. Um, that kind of carried for a little while. And then you get into, <clears throat> you kind of have Hogan kind of in the mix. And with Hogan was very, you had a super center pivot motion, right? Like super flat, low golf swings. These were up, lots of movement, super long golf swings. This is when you start to see swings to parallel, a little bit of lag. There's no, there's zero conversation about lagging the golf club. None. Maybe a little bit here, but still not much to talk about lag. Then you have, then come, you know, you got what? You got Palmer, you got Nicholas, you got a number of these guys. Uh, Gary Player was kind of transitioning out of this, which is that walkthrough that you saw. Like he would have that lot of weight shift on that front side. Fitness starts to get introduced here a little bit. Um, but this is where you saw the, the reverse C out of Nicholas, right? And you saw some, <clears throat> still some creativity, uniqueness in Palmer's motion, right? He was actually over the top. In and closed over the top, played a pull draw. His bad shot was a hook, so it played a little soft cut uh, with that holding off finish. So this was one of those like really unique golf swings, right? That was kind of where you started to see some differentiation. Then you saw this transition into the 80s and 90s, and you had guys like Tom Purser. The guys on the tour said that he had the prettiest swing in golf. Go find any videos you want on Tom Purser. He has no lag at the bottom of his golf swing. Zero, not a zilch. Yeah. Right? Freddie's in that category. So you have couples and couples is in here too. Right? So you're seeing this shift and this change yeah. in golf instruction. And then you get, uh, so uh, Ernie Ells is kind of in this blending here. Um, now you're starting to see more rotation to show back up. So you've got a guy like Chip Beck shows up. And in the late 80s, early 90s, they started teaching swing the arms to swing the body. Right? All these people over the top going like this, lunging with their chest. So we're just going to swing the arms and swing the body. And so the body just follows the arms. Yeah. Well, we know that's not true. Maybe, kind of, sort of. And so then you have <coughs> Tiger. It's kind of one of those transitions into a little bit of that lagging of the club head this way. Then you start seeing, because Phil has a little bit of that, but Phil's still back here, right? Then you have, um, you've got Phil, and then you start seeing guys start to come out. you got McElroy, right? McElroy, in some ways, is a more upright, but very, you're kind of back to Hogan. Yeah. A lot of rotation. Seeing a lot of fitness show up here. Then you start seeing a lot of uh, late 90s. You had the Norman Secret. Welcome, live golfers. Right? The Norman Secret. You've probably seen that device, right? It's that black thing that goes in the back of the hand. So we're teaching everybody to lag it, right? Your chips were all that way. Like hinge and hold, that was the theme, right? So not that any of these are wrong. It's just there's, it depends on the person that you're in. So this is why when I look at people and go like, well, which golf swing do you want to make? Like, you're telling me through the lens of 2023. Yeah. And so <clears throat> then you see a lot of this lag, 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 which introduce Morikawa. A lot of tour guys have a lot of lag now. Part of that's equipment. So equipment shifting, right? You're out of the persimmon headed woods. Now you're into the metals. Now you're into, now you're carbon woods. And so all of that shifting spin rates change on the club. So equipment is starting to affect some of the golf swings. You had to throw it, right? So when you have clubs that 
launch it low and spin it a lot, yeah. you kind of have to throw it to get the spin loft down. So there's gotcha. lots of ways to manage it. Now, they didn't, we didn't talk about spin loft. We didn't talk about any of that stuff. Yeah. And you kind of don't need to. You just need to know what the ball does, right? So yeah. now we're into, um, now you're into force plates, right? Right? Now you're into, uh, um, Mike Adams does this whole measurement of like forearm lengths. And you have, uh, Bender has his thing. And then you have, now you're having everybody has their thing. Yeah. You got your force plate guys. You got your, uh, you got your Mike Bender gonna hit everybody to hit a draw. You've got your Mike Adams has his thing. I'm like, well, each body's different. You got your TPI guys that are like, we're going to get you in and heavy on the fitness side. And any of those are fine. So, like, how much lag do you actually need? Then it comes into what's your club fit like, right? How hard is it going to be for us to get this? Can you control it under pressure? Maybe, maybe not. I actually don't think you need a lot. So, like, if we were talking about your golf swing back here, we would just basically try and keep you kind of centered and tall and let the club head release and then fit you to that. Okay. Right? So I've got you more in this Hertz or L's yeah. type motion. Okay. A little bit of chip back. Not so much in the current viewpoint of everybody's got to lag it. We got to lag it. We got all these training aids now yeah. to like lag it, lag it, lag it. But well, okay. that's one of the hardest things to achieve. Why the vast majority of golf instruction, golf swings, I mean, you're basically like no lag territory or very little. Yeah. A little bit of shaffling, but not much. Okay. okay. Yeah, that helps out because I get guilty of focusing on how can I do it more that. You got DJ? Or call it the top. Yep. Who else you got? You got Kepka? You got Rom? Now, one of the things I think we're starting to see is we're actually starting to see some of this come back. You got Palmer. You've got uh, uh, who am I thinking of? Uh, let's see, Raymond Floyd, right? Everybody's like, "Oh, Rom's got this totally unique swing." Go back and watch. Rom is Raymond Floyd, almost identical to Raymond Floyd, except he's got more bow in the wrist than Floyd had. But other than that, they're basically identical. Hands stay really close to the target line. Club shaft gets really laid off, especially as Floyd got older. Like that. And then they transition almost the same. Same personality, same demeanor. Read about him in the World Golf Hall of Fame. You're like, are they talking about John Rahm or Raymond Floyd? So, like, when I'm looking at golf swings and when people ask me questions, I don't normally give them this context. They're like, wait, what? That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm looking at a golf swing, I'm pulling through like what trend? Uh, you've yeah. got uh, you got the A swing. That was one. There's a whole book on the A swing, right? That's the that's the this way, that way. That's the um, uh, Gankus, right? Gankus is basically an extreme version of the A swing. That's all it is. Yeah. So that's what's kind of neat is which one do we need to make? What do you want the ball to do? Yeah. And then we can deal with strategically how do we play with that? What does your fit look like? Okay. And that's where now that we're adding Scott Wilkerson to the equation, yeah. I'm like, hey, I need Tyler. I want him swinging like this. I'm going to need something. That's pro I don't know what the shaft needs to be, but this is the motion I want him making. He's swinging the way I want it. I need you to fit to wherever on this spectrum we actually are. I have a player right now that I think needs a steel shafted driver okay. with an older head yeah. from a sustainability of movement standpoint. Is that right, wrong? I don't, I don't yeah. know. Like, it's as long as the pieces match, it doesn't matter where we're at on this yeah. whole spectrum. So for you, I think it's just staying center yeah. and just picturing a shot and let your body hit it. Try not to be so specific with exactly where it needs to be. Okay. Yeah, that helps me out a lot because I get everybody wants to swing like this. Right. But if we were back here, like this was done, this is in Golf Digest magazine. It's like yeah. Yeah. 
It's the prettiest swing in all of golf. Yeah. You'd be trying to swing like Purser. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, a phenomenal player. So, just kind of putting those pieces yeah. together of what you actually need. Okay. I hope I.